Eastern Pacific storms on the horizon on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for June 26. Well, we still have action in the Atlantic, but Cindy is very much dying off and Brett is already died off. Uh, still a remnant low can be traced moving towards Central America. But the main action that we're expecting fairly soon is Eastern Pacific systems that we're expecting to form. Of course, we are very late uh, starting the Eastern Pacific hurricane season. It's day 26 of the Atlantic though, as Brett and Cindy Cindy moving northwestwards slowly towards Bermuda, uh, but it is expected to dissipate in the next 24 hours or less. In the eastern Pacific then, there's two moderate chances right now. I actually downgraded the western one slightly to 60% and a 50% behind it. I'm still pretty sure that at least one of these systems will form on day 44 of hurricane season here. In the Western Pacific, we still have a 10% chance in the Philippine Sea, although those chances are very uh, low now and diminishing almost completely at this point, but just, just in case, on guard along the Philippine coast there for a potential system that might form. And elsewhere, the tropics are quiet. Nothing else active right now. A few uh, thunderstorms and showers over India with the onset of the monsoon. And off the coast of the Bay of Bengal, a few thunderstorms and a bit of convection out there as well. But generally, the basin is looking quiet. Satellite imagery the last 24 hours. This is what it's yielded. Look out for any red zones showing intense rainfall amounts. A few spots over India there as first mentioned and over parts of Micronesia as well. And obviously you can see Cindy's influence there on the left hand side over the Atlantic, although it is starting to degrade. Here's the satellite imagery of the Eastern Pacific Ocean and you can see that big bank of convection there that's south of Mexico. That could be that first system and the second one uh, is probably going to be a mix of that little um, rotation area to the southwest of Costa Rica and it will probably merge with some energy from Brett's remnants and that could become that next tropical storm. There's Cindy over there over in, uh, quite far away from the Lesser Antilles well towards the northeast its center would be located around that dot there that i've just drawn and it's being sheared quite spectacularly at this point to the northeast and i've also circled the remnants of brett there which will be harassing the coast of nicaragua a little bit there it's got some decent convection in one or two small spots and it's going to be very concentrated thunderstorm activity there's also another little thing there in the uh, area in the main development region uh, which is blowing up a bit of convection but it's not going to be anything to be particularly concerned about as we move forward uh, just a curious little footnote Sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific are still very good, above 30 degrees Celsius for a large chunk of the area south of Mexico and extending into the Gulf of Mexico on the Atlantic side there as well. Around Florida, the Bahamas and Cuba, temperatures really good there as well, up to 30 degrees Celsius and a big bank of warm water extending up through the Sargasso Sea and along the Gulf Stream extending well beyond the outer banks and really getting wider further south as well, so looking good in the Atlantic. Western Pacific also looking good for those sea surface temperatures, very warm SSTs around the Philippines over 30 degrees Celsius and a big slick there of 26 degrees Celsius and warmer now in the East China Sea that's really expanded in that area in the last week or two. So Western Pacific really getting geared up. North Indian Ocean, the Bay of Bengal looking good, 30 degrees plus the Arabian Sea cooled off a little bit due to the trade winds uh, off the coast of Somalia, the Horn of Africa, moving towards the northeast. Southwest Indian Ocean, things are looking pretty quiet here obviously, and those warm waters are further receding away from the Mascarene Islands. And in the Australian region, a little spot of 28 degrees popping up there, uh, northwest of Darwin, and in the South Pacific, uh, things still cooling there as well. 
sea surface temperature anomalies, you can see how warm they are compared to average, the oranges of course being above average. Eastern Pacific still has a sizable cool pool there between Mexico and Hawaii, but the Atlantic is extremely warm compared to average, particularly in the MDR and especially the Eastern Atlantic off the coast of Africa, around 3 degrees above the normal. In the Eastern Pacific, the El Nino effect becoming more pronounced in the last few weeks uh, along the equator. Oceanic heat content is looking good across the Caribbean Sea and extending a little bit further through the Lesser Antilles where Brent was of course and into some parts of the Gulf of Mexico. Eastern Pacific has stayed fairly steady in the last couple of weeks and the Western Pacific also fairly similar but looking very good especially near the coast of the Philippines with extremely high energy there in the ocean. So let's see what the GFS has in store then for the next five days. So first of all, you can see Brett moving over Central America and some of its energy looks like it will be transferred to an Eastern Pacific storm. What happens to Cindy though? Big question mark as to whether it might regenerate uh, once again near Bermuda or whether it might even be a different system. Watch Cindy closely there, might just about spot its center and another one forming to the east of it. Reminds me of a Lee situation back in 2017 if I'm being honest and that could end up up being a new storm or whether the National Hurricane Center might make it the same storm we don't know and that might not even happen yet so we'll wait and see on that Eastern Pacific the potential formation of these two storms you can see the western one there much broader the eastern one forming later on after Brett completely moves over and could be a threat to the coast of Mexico a smaller system getting to a stronger intensity quite possibly there approaching hurricane strength by the end of five days the first system broader and already moving out to sea could get to hurricane status as well there as it continues west northwest and looking at rainfall expectations for the next seven days um, looking closely at where these storms will track of course it will be the edges that will affect the land area and so most areas shouldn't get huge amounts of rainfall but there will be some exceptions over the next seven days we're looking at some significant rainfall amounts getting up towards 10 inches 7.5 there on the western coast of Nicaragua 7.8 there on the Guatemala Mexico border and 10 inches in along the coast of the uh, Gulf of Tehuantepec and out to sea a little bit higher there as well up to 16 inches and 26 inches well out to sea there but 10 inches looks like it's going to be the maximum for the next seven days that's 250 millimeters as these two systems uh, career towards the west northwest there and that will be a trend that probably will be well forecasted the longer range looks like this, this is day 5 to 10, the Atlantic, potentially three systems to watch, whatever Cindy becomes or its neighbour uh, up towards the Atlantic Canada coastline. Another short wave there in the very deep tropics of the main development region and a third system that could form in the Western Caribbean shooting up through the Yucatan Channel and into the Gulf of Mexico potentially becoming a subtropical or tropical storm as it veers northwards towards the coast of Louisiana and Texas towards the end around about the 5th of July there actually. So that is something interesting for the longer range but no chances on those yet. And these two systems in the Eastern Pacific, they slowly come together actually towards the end there and the latter system becomes the dominant one and survives and gets close to the uh, southern tip of the Baja California Peninsula by the end of day 10. And maybe a potential third system that tries to form behind that to the southwest of Guatemala. It looks like it loses its energy though and probably doesn't form. In the Western Pacific, the Philippine region, I think this is something towards the very end of the 10 day period that might start to develop and there possibly is another little cyclonic thing going on there east of Hong Kong off the coast of China and there it is a very small system forming right at the end of that run I wouldn't put much faith in that yet but just look at the South China Sea again there is some rotation going on southeast of Hong Kong around the 3rd of July and moves up towards the northeast could affect the coast of China interesting well that's all the serious stuff done with, you can scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store which has all of our usual items including our full season and individual storm animations on request. And always our still waiting for Hone t-shirt which feels like it's going to really be a permanent fixture at this rate. 
in the Silly Range, that's day 10 to 16, very far out. Another potential system forming in the Atlantic, a brief one into the Eastern Caribbean, then it gets extremely broad and loses its shape completely there towards the western part of the uh, sea. But apart from that, not much going on in the Atlantic Basin in the longer range. They are all small, fairly weak systems that we're looking at. And um, even though we're expecting Cindy at one point to possibly be quite strong, it, we're still going to be waiting probably quite a while for our first hurricane of the season, which to be honest is how it should be. In the eastern Pacific, that system moves past the Baja California Peninsula just about. Well, it dies off as it does so. And then maybe two more systems after that as well. You can see them right there. One of them very short-lived near El Salvador and the other one there. Uh, almost a mirror image of the one that we're looking at right now the first system the western one uh, so yeah pretty much what you'd expect from the eastern pacific in july um, it does remind me of a few seasons prior where we did have a bit of a wave train that develops july is the favored month for the eastern pacific to do that and in the Western Pacific, what becomes of that new storm there? Well, it becomes a typhoon and starts to grow and doesn't move very much. But eventually, at some point, it gets going there, moving northwards and gets quite strong, actually, through the Ryukyu, Ryukyu Islands into the East China Sea and towards uh, the Korean Peninsula, North Korea, as a matter of fact. But that is still very far out. Its formation is over is pretty much 10 days away, so I wouldn't put any faith into this forming just yet, uh, or indeed any of that track forecast. You can talk about all of this on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather and general weather chat from uh, people around the world. A large community of over 3,400 members, our big massive family on there right now. And what happened on this day? It was a bit of a surprise. A small but potent Hurricane Bonnie was making landfall along the border between Louisiana and Texas on June 26, 1986. Probably a bit of a forgotten storm, this one. Uh, it swept inland there and was curving towards the northeast. We also had Tropical Storm Celia active in the eastern Pacific and what was left of Typhoon Nancy, I think it might have been Tropical Storm, that had swept through Japan in the days prior and was now moving out uh, back over the North Pacific. Nice picture of Bonnie there. That was after landfall, still had a decent structure. Well, back to today, and the next name in the Atlantic naming list is Don. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Adrian, still. And in the Central Pacific, of course, it is very much still Hone. For those who don't know, we've been waiting nearly four years for that storm to arrive. In the Western Pacific, next up is Tallinn, the North Indian Ocean, Tej. And it's just four days, just over four days, until the Southwest Indian Ocean gets their new names set up for the upcoming season in their summer, which is our winter in the Northern Hemisphere. But for now, the next name is Gizani, the Australian region, Jasper, and the South Pacific, Lola. That's all for tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.